Boy, 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 we get to week seven. I know I've been getting the weeks wrong the last couple weeks. I know I've corrected those in the titles of the videos, and I probably won't go back and you know, edit those out because, I mean, come on. Because um, I said week four like two weeks in a row. It's actually week seven now. We're seven weeks into the college basketball season. What's happening? I'll tell you what's happening. COVID is canceling games left and right like it's 2020 all over again. Like, I, I, I genuinely don't know what's going on here. I, I don't know. Like, I get it. But at the same time, aren't all these guys vaccinated? You know, aren't all these guys vaccinated? Asymptomatic, you know? I, I, I genuinely don't know. Like, it's confusing at this point. Because teams are going to be, you know, over the past few days, we've seen teams lose quality non-conference games that they need. This is really it. This is really the last week to be doing big-time non-conference games. You know, week seven, you know, as we head into Christmas, you know, still kind of a lackluster slate. I know, I know Saturday, you know, a bunch of games got canceled, mixed all together, but we still got some interesting results out here. On Saturday, you know, most of the earlier games of the week really didn't do too much. You had to wait till Friday to really get, you know, something of, you know, something of a semblance of a pulse of a college basketball game that is intriguing, you know, despite what the media big shots in the college basketball will say, you know. Um, Memphis, they're on COVID protocols and stuff like that, but they did clobber Alabama. They clobbered Alabama. Like, this was a whipping. Like, I don't, I don't think I expected this, like, at all. Like, I, I did not watch this game because I expected Memphis to, you know, just lay down and not play up to their potential. But they finally play up to their potential. They finally played up the team they're supposed to play like. And, you know, crazy stuff there with Memphis. Uh, here's the real kicker. Whoever is uh, uh, is uh, doing you know laundry and stuff like that you know for Cop and State, get that man fired. How do you not? How do you not bring the team's uniforms to your game against Drexel? Uh, they had to wear Drexel's practice uniforms in this game. That's crazy. Um, I have no idea because I don't care about the result of this game. But I just found this pretty funny because this is one of the. Weirdest things I think I've ever seen in my entire life, you know. I was just like, huh? What do you mean they brought, they didn't bring their uniforms. Then they had to wear practice uniforms in this game. It's just like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Alright guys, so, um, maybe Villanova's bad. They got throttled by Creighton. They got, they got whipped. I, I, I didn't think that was going to happen either. We're going to have to watch out for Providence. And Milano was also playing Xavier this week, maybe. You know, I, I genu like again, like teams are, are getting COVID, you know, cases left and right. It impacted the CBS Sports Classic so much that we got a North Carolina Kentucky game for like the second year in a row that, you know, got reshuffled. You know, this got reshuffled again. And instead, you know, Instead of, you know, probably, you know, Kentucky, you know, not playing up to their full potential either, they throttled North Carolina. They whipped them. Oscar Sheepway and company, they put up 98 on this Tar Heels team, you know. They got their, they got a big signature win. They really got one. They got that win, Kentucky did. And I'm worried for Louisville because Louisville got, got beat by Western Kentucky on Saturday as well, you know. Shout out to Western Kentucky. They've had a great weekend, you know, with Bailey Zapp, you know, getting the passing yards record beaten, you know, Louisville at home, you know, you know, that, that the uh, the Bowling Green area and stuff like that, still trying to recover from that, that crazy um, storm or whatever, you know, that is good. That is the good stuff right there. The good feel good story for Western Kentucky, but Kentucky it, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be intriguing because SEC play is coming up. You know, some teams are starting you know conference play like Duke is starting their conference slate up this week. You know, they had to find extra games and stuff like that. They had to find replacements. Like there was so many games that had canceled or postponed or rescheduled, and it's just like uh, I don't know at this point. If you are interested in Bill Walton, by the way, you know 
he, he was on the uh, Texas Stanford game today. If Kansas Colorado gets played, you know, get your beer out for that one. You know, cause that's gonna be crazy. Like, I, like I know a lot of people don't really seem to like the guy. You know, a lot of Texas fans were complaining today. We get Stanford and Texas, by the way, finally got there. You know, finally got a signature non-conference win. You know, Stanford isn't really that great of a team, but you know, still they need still Texas needed a Power Five win, same as Kentucky. You know, both these teams needed a Power Five win, a, a Power Conference win. Because the rest of their resumes so far, you know, were not up the scruff, especially Texas. Like, I swear, there's just probably quad three and quad four wins all over the resume for Texas. I'm not sure about Kentucky, but I know for damn sure that Texas pretty much has quad three and quad four wins all over their resume so far. So, you know, again, Texas really needed this victory today. Iowa State still undefeated, you know, too. Baylor's still undefeated, so that's going to make an interesting matchup on January 1st. Baylor and Iowa State, you know, I know I know Golden Blue Dude, if you watch him, you know, he's probably, you know, you know, crying out to the stars that, you know, West Virginia should be ranked. Uh, I believe they should be at this point, you know, too. So I don't know what the rankings are going to look like because, I mean, things have changed so rapidly in college basketball. And, you know, USC, I was going to talk a little bit more about them with their team being led by Boogie Ellis and Isaiah Mobley. They're 12-0, and but unfortunately, their game against Oklahoma State, it's not going to happen because of COVID issues within USC's program. So we'll have to wait to talk about USC a little bit more. Um, there's also some under-the-radar games. You, this week, it's really you're really going to have to focus on Tuesday and Wednesday night. You know, for your college basketball fix, Wednesday's the better day for it, you know. Um, Murray State Auburn is an under the radar type game. Jabari Smith, a lot of guys that are a lot of a lot of prospects, you know, aren't as, you know, you know, like like this is definitely a younger guy, you know, Jabari Smith is. He's playing some great basketball, I think, right now. You know, a lot of people probably aren't talking about him as much as, you know, like um Mancaro or Palmgren. But I mean, definitely we definitely should be talking about this guy. We're going to be talking about him more, you know, um, next Sunday when it, when it comes to, you know, getting conference play and stuff like that started. Um, best game of the week by far, Ben Mathurin in Arizona. They're going up against Tennessee. Tennessee, we all know, is a pretty good team. You know, last time we talked about Tennessee last week, that was, again, that was a rough game against Texas Tech they had last week. But it should be a fun one. This Arizona team is on fire right now. You know, and we'll be talking heavily about Arizona over the next couple weeks here on the channel because I cannot wait for these big time matchups that Arizona has. But we'll see if this we'll see if some of these games even get played. You know, again, like Duke is starting up ACC play. I know against Virginia Tech and the ACC is having some trouble right now because of how they performed in the non conference and stuff like that. So uh, again, I don't know how everything is going to go. You know, with EAC, because, I mean, it looks like it's really just a one-bid league right now. Like, you could give, like, nine or ten bids to the Big East, in all honesty. Hell, give ten bids to the Big 12, too. You know, give, give, that, give both those conferences ten, ten teams in, in the tournament, I think, you know, right now. So, we'll see how everything goes over this week, you know, week seven of the college basketball season, and... Hopefully, you know, COVID doesn't do too much damage. If it does, uh, we'll try as best as we can here on the channel to cover it. Um, rest of the week, obviously, like I said, um, sat, well, actually, early Saturday night into Sunday morning, you know, like 18, 19 hours ago, like I said. Um, just watch out for the NFL videos coming throughout the week. Watch out for a, uh, we're probably going to do another arena football update because I believe there's some more arena football stuff coming. So we'll get that ready. Uh, Cause I need, I do need to talk. I, I do need to talk arena football and stuff like that there. I have some of my notes ready, but not all of them yet. So we'll get that done this week. Um, again, NFL, we'll get the he on Tuesday night instead of Monday night. And then the preview will be on a Thursday. Of course, and then we'll talk about the NBA. Um, we'll talk about the NBA on Wednesday because, again, there's a lot going on with the NBA and COVID as well. So, um, 
I'll get some I'll get some notes ready for the NBA too because I mean I I haven't done as much you know NBA watching yet. But for all you college basketball nuts out there, tell me you know again how your team is doing. Again, my Texas Longhorns are not that great of a team. I'll tell you that right now. You know Alabama, you know pretty good. Houston still damn good. You know we still got a lot of good teams in the top twenty-five. They're probably still gonna be in the top twenty-five come Monday morning. You know, and whoever come, breaks into the top 25, I, I guarantee it's going to be crazy. Uh, for the teams that are struggling right now, like Villanova, you know, you got you, 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 you got to do something. You got to do something because conference play is coming. It's coming hard for you. It's coming hard. So that's going to do it from here. I'll see you all, you know, throughout the week. Take care and good night.